All right, guys, today we are starting a new chapter, and uh, we actually do have notes. Um, I want you to go in and listen. We'll talk about them. Um, unfortunately, the notes were never delivered. I copied them yesterday, and they're supposed to be delivered today, and they're not. So we will get caught up on them. There's only three notes, so we'll get them caught up tomorrow. All right, <clears throat> so go ahead and pay attention, but for right now, you don't have to take out your notes, Okay. Because you have, remember, this is a new chapter. So we're starting chapter three today. We're done with chapter two. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> today we're just starting very basic. We're starting with just your basic fractions and decimals. All right, so we actually have three words that we're going to talk about here. You'll need to know what they mean for them to, for it to help you with tonight's homework. So here we go. First one, some of these, hopefully you guys already know what they are. So the first one is a repeating decimal, everyone. Repeating decimal. <clears throat> so your book says it's a decimal whose digits repeat in groups of one or more without end. So for example, point one eight one eight one eight, and it just keeps going. Okay? That would be an example of a repeating decimal. Okay? The next word is bar notation, everyone. So, bar notation says, in repeating decimals, the bar notation is the line or bar placed over the digits that repeat. Okay? So, for example, this right up here, the point 1818 all right, would look just like that. Okay? The bar notation is over the what's repeating. And last but not least, terminating decimal, everyone. Terminating so here it is. It's a repeat. This is, this is where, and you might see this definition somewhere. I always found this definition a little weird, but just where you know, this is what your book says, and this might pop up on a test. A, re a terminating decimal is actually, they consider a repeating decimal, which has a repeating digit of zero. Okay. So for example, 3.5000000 000 000 000 000 000 goes on forever. It's repeating. Of course, we when we write it down, we express it as just 3.5 or 3 and 5 tenths. Okay? So, definition of a terminating decimal. It's a repeating decimal that has a repeating digit of 0. Okay, questions on any of those? All right, a lot of you guys have it ready. If you do not, go ahead and grab a piece of lined paper. And let's go ahead and start getting ready for our examples. All right, so grab your book, flip over to page 98. 98. All right, those of you that are just barely getting your papers out, please make sure first and last name up at the top, the date, period, lesson number, page number 98. <clears throat> okay, so in your book, looking at 98, okay, I want to start with problem 26. 26 So it starts off with a fraction negative 5 elevenths. Okay. Now, the directions say for that section, write each fraction as a decimal. Use a bar to show a repeating decimal. Okay. So here we go. Step one is divide, I'll put the B into T, all right, just as a little reminder. If you want to write down the words, we're dividing the bottom into the top. So meaning that when we write our, when we write our problem, problem, 
Five's the dividend, 11's the divisor. Five's inside the shed, 11's outside the shed. I don't know how many of you had elementary teachers that taught you that. That seems to be a popular one. Okay. Now, of course, when you're gonna divide, right, the number inside's smaller. That's what gives us the decimal. So we put a decimal point and a zero to make it appear like 50. Okay, so 50 divided by 11 is basically the problem we're going to do. Now, um, I asked around, and uh, for today, all right, ta-da, yeah, you guys should be excited right now. All right, so that you'll have your main focus is the actual skill, not the long division. Okay. Now, there's no guarantee that you're going to be able to use a calculator on any other any other uh, lesson. I'll keep you guys updated on that. But on today, you will. Now, listen. Calculators are used in this class for right now in seventh grade and, and advanced eighth. Right now, they're only used for long multiplication and long division when we're talking about speed. Okay. So the work I'm showing is still the work you'll need to show. Okay. Now, here's what we're going to do. Okay. Step one, when it comes to work, you will not need to show this. I was just reminding you that when you don't have a calculator, you, you will still need to divide. Okay. Still bottom to top. Now, when you insert this problem here, okay, it, we punch in the top number first, okay, which is the div dividend, divided by the bottom number. Okay. Five divided by 11. I hit my equal sign, and we end up with 45 hundredths, but it, of course, is repeating. So, step two, okay, is write down our answer. Okay. But, I'll put a little star here, do not forget about bar notation if needed. It's not always needed, but in this case, it is. And I don't think any of you guys want to write all that, right? So, you place a bar over the digits that are repeating, just like we said in our vocab. So, there's that. Now, it's funny because even though we're using a calculator, you have all these little things, and you don't want to forget the little things because it will alter your answer. So do not forget step three. That is, don't forget your negative sign. So just a quick recap. Step one, divide the bottom into the top, or you could say the top divided by the bottom. Step two, of course, write your answer within bar notation if needed. And step three, if it has a sign, make sure you put the correct sign on it, all right, positive or negative. Not too bad this first part, okay? Any questions? Yes, please. Yeah, the zero in the, the z what the zero does, guys, all it does is, is like a placeholder. It's in the one spot, but most importantly, it helps you recognize the decimal point. Okay? Because you never put a whole number with a zero in front, right? So that way, if you see the zero, you know there's a, probably a decimal there. Okay? Unless you're 007 James Bond, right? Then you'd have a zero in front. But we're not James Bond, so we don't have to worry about that. All right, 30 seconds. All right, 30 seconds. I want you guys to try out problem 16. Go, 16.
Okay, how many of you need more time? Okay. Okay, anyone still need more time? Okay, about 15 more seconds there. Okay. 30 seconds, please turn to your partner and share. Go. All right, here we go. Problem 16. All right, problem 16. We had the same directions. It's 3 eighths. All right, so step one, of course, is I'm going to divide, today at least, using my calculator. Hit clear. I'm going to divide the top divided by the bottom. So 3 divided by 8 equals, and I end up with 300, oops, 300. 75 uh, thousandths. Bar notation, uh, my calculator's not saying there's any bar notation, so I don't have to worry about it. And then sign, there is no negative. So in this case, there it is. Okay, questions on that? That was just asked, yes. Yep. That's why I was saying, that's what I was talking about when I said that it helps identify the zero, or the decimal, yes. The zero helps identify the decimal. Is that for every single problem? Every single problem? Every single problem? Every single problem? I know, but like, we can do it. All right. Other questions, guys? All right, let's take a look then at the next type of problem, okay? Page 98, problem 34, problem 34. Okay, so, in this section, you're having a comparison problem, right? So you have negative 2 ninths, and it's being compared to the size anyway. The value is being compared to negative 1 fourth. Okay? Oops, I said 2 ninths, right? Yeah. 2 ninths. What's the writing version of a typo? I don't know, I'm just joking. That's my mistake. All right, so negative 2 ninths is being compared to negative 1 fourth. Okay? So, um, of course, the directions say uh, replace each circle there, or shaded circle in your book, with a less than, greater than, or equal to sign to make a true sentence. Okay? So, here is what you're going to do. Okay? Step one, you're going to convert... these both if needed to decimals. So we have 2 divided by 9 and I have a repeating decimal of 2 tenths. I make sure I have my negative on there, right? And then of course some of these hopefully are mental math for you guys, right? You could always check it, but I mean hopefully most of you guys know that 1 fourth Twenty-five hundredths. Of course, don't forget your negative. OK? 
Okay, so I just went through steps one, two, and three on both of those from the previous problem. Okay, now, I want to tell you guys, okay, two things. We'll call this step star, meaning it's, it's just a reminder, okay? When you're comparing, when you're comparing, if there's a bar notation, okay? I should say even if there's not a bar notation, it's easiest to compare if there's the same amount of digits. All right? So what I mean by that is this. This has this goes to the hundredths, two digits to the right of the decimal. Because I'm not putting a zero back here because it's a repeating decimal, so I'm going to go ahead and put another two. If I want to, of course, extend my bar, that would be fine. Okay, now, if you want to write a little note next to that star, you can put same digits, same amount of digits, same number of digits, okay? If you're afraid, afraid that you're going to forget what that means, okay? And then, here's the no another thing you need to watch for with these, and so this would almost be a step star as well. Remember, negative value. Remember negative value. What I mean by that is, is remember that, for example, a, talking whole numbers, negative two and negative five, if you were comparing those, which one would be larger? Negative two. The negative two. Decimals are the same way, okay? Remember, when you're talking negatives, you can almost fi figure that the one that's closest to zero is the larger number, right? Because that would be the one that's on the right side. So if these were positives, which one would be bigger? 25. The 25 hundredths, like having a quarter, right? 25 cents, we're talking money. And this would be 22 cents, or well, with bar notation, right? Which is a little weird, but still, okay? However, remember, the opposite applies on the negative side. Because like I said, what appears to be closer to zero is actually greater on the negative side. So which one is closer to zero? Yeah. Okay. So be careful of that. That you have to give that a little thought. Okay. That's one of the reasons why we're using calculators today. Not because I, we don't want you to waste your time doing all that long division. We want you to give more time and focus to little things like this. So now this is very important as well. All right. I guess since all of them were reminders, here's step two. I want you to go to the original problem. And this is very important because this is how tests will look, okay? If this was multiple choice, you wouldn't see this as an answer a, on A, B, or C, or D. You would see this a lot of times, okay? So go back to your original and then, of course, put your answer there, all right? Next to the original, put your answer there. So in this case... Uh, this one is larger, right? So that means the negative two ninths is larger than negative one fourth. Okay, it's just the little things, but you need don't go fast on those because you'll that could be a definite tiny mistake, but still a mistake. Okay, all right. Questions about that type of problem or either one of the stars I was talking about? Step star, right? The little reminders. Or any of those steps, we're okay? Okay, I'm gonna have you try one, here we go. Okay, oh, by the way, I do wanna point this out, that's why I left myself a little note to remind you guys. You could use these and find common denominators. I'm okay with you finding common denominators. Okay, I'm not, we're not gonna have time to go over that, but if you remember how to find common denominators and then compare the numerators, you could do it that way as well, instead of going the decimal route, okay? I just feel that especially using a calculator, the decimal route is going to be a little easier for you. Okay, so, um, but feel free to use a common denominator if you feel more comfortable that way as well. Okay, you still have to be careful with at least this one, right, with a negative value. Be careful of that even if you go that route. Okay, so here's the problem I want you guys to try. Problem 30, go. Problem 30, go.
باشه Guys, please, please, no talking until you guys are sharing, okay? Look at your steps. Try to use your steps first. Struggle through it on your own first, okay? And then you'll have a chance to share with your neighbors. Okay, anyone need more time? Okay, all right, 30 seconds. Turn to your neighbor and share. Go. I got you. Okay. Athletes, please leave quietly. The rest of us, let's refocus. We still have a lesson to finish. All right, here we go. Problem 30. Problem 30 says 6 fifteenths being compared to four tenths so decimal point four okay so on this one right you don't have to convert both of them you only one so I go ahead grab my calculator and convert six fifteenths to a decimal so six divided by fifteen equals four tenths well I don't have to worry about making sure they're the same size because they're already that way or bar notation I don't have to worry about negative value so ladies and gentlemen I just go up to my original here and put my answer 6 fifteenths is equal to 4 tenths okay questions on number 30 God bless you questions okay really quickly all right Take a look at numbers 36 and 46 on page 98. 36 and 46. Um, just make sure, guys, on those, okay, it's very much like the one we did earlier, is that you're gonna have you're gonna have some repeating decimals there. Okay. So I want to point this out. If you have, let's state, let's state positive for right now. If you have, if you have three tenths versus three tenths in bar notation, and these are po staying positive, meaning positive integers. Okay, are, are positive numbers, rational numbers. Okay. Think about the, the best way to do. They already. You might say, well, they already have the same digits, Mr. Wilkins. Yeah. But if this is the case, because of the repeating decimal, I want you to extend it one more. Because if you extend it one more, this becomes 0 0.30. This becomes 0 0.33. And now you can see the difference in the two. So be careful of that. Okay, for those of you that aren't, are, you know, questioning whether or not the bar is more than the non-bar. Okay. Of course, it would be reversed, right? If the if it's a negative integer, a negative number. Okay. So be careful. Okay. Any questions about that? Part. Okay, I'm just, that's kind of, I think, what those two you'll come across, so be careful of that. Okay, here we go. One more type of problem. Let's take a look at problem 48. All right, fun, fun. It's basically what we've been doing, but it's three numbers instead of one. So here we go. Number 48 is they're giving us negative 29 hundredths. 
negative three elevenths and negative two sevenths. Okay, here we go. Step one, make sure they're all in decimal form. All right, so this one's already in decimal form, negative 29 hundredths. This one is not, so we convert negative 3 elevenths. So 3 divided by 11 equals repeating decimal of 27, but don't forget your negative. And then 2 sevenths, 2 divided by 7, and that is not a repeating decimal. Okay. Now, keep this in mind. 0 0.2857. As a matter of fact, because we're only ordering them and because the answer is going to be in original form, we don't really have to worry about any of that, right? As a matter of fact, you could just cut it off after that, right? 0.28. Now, you can round if you want, but be careful because it's going to show the same value as this, okay? So I'll put like a little dotted line here to know that that's, it keeps going, right? Five, seven, you look at the calculator. Okay, but in reality, it's a little over negative 28 hundredths, okay? I should say a little less than negative 28 hundredths for value. Okay, here we go. When we're comparing, okay, step two would be to compare. All right, so remember, because they're negatives, the opposite applies, okay? So this would look like the largest, but in reality, it's the smallest, all right? So I'll put a little one here. Okay, by the way, always double check and make sure it says order each group of numbers from least to greatest. So I'm good. I'm going smallest to largest. So that is the smallest. This, of course, would be the next smallest. And this, of course, is the largest. Okay, remember they're negative values. I'm referring back to the problem we did up here. So the opposite would apply. This looks like the largest, right? But it's really the smallest. It's furthest away from zero. Now, step three is you're going to go ahead and you're going to write it in original form, original form again. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and rewrite. So for the smallest, it is negative 29 hundredths. For the next smallest, it is negative 2 sevenths. And for the largest is negative 3 elevenths. Okay. Questions on that one? Okay, I want you guys to try one really quickly. Problem 50. Problem 50. I'll give you guys one minute for that. Go. Okay, anyone need more time on that? Okay. The rest of you guys that understand it and you're already done, go ahead and move ahead on your homework.
Okay, guys, because of time, here's I want to do this just really quickly. All right, number 50. We have negative 1 and 1 tenth in repeating decimal, negative 1 and 1 eighth, and we have negative 1 and 1 tenth. Okay, if I convert these to a decimal, I would have negative 1. There you go. 1 divided by 8 is 0.125. And then negative 1 and 1 tenth, if you listen to it, there it is, negative 1 and 1 tenth. Now, if I go ahead and extend these to have the same digits, there's that right there, and 0, 0. Okay, listen carefully. I'm going to go ahead and put them in order. All right, so remember, this looks like the smallest, but it's actually the largest. Okay, so that means that this would be the smallest, this would be the next, and this would be the third, which means in order, least to greatest. All right, all right, decimals and fractions.